Healthy chocolate chip cookies? Frank, have you lost your mind? Some of you may remember my ice cream video from last year, where we made ice cream with very high quality ingredients, more specifically, high quality animal foods, raw grass-fed cream, farm-raised pastured eggs, raw honey. Believe it or not, you can eat cookies and ice cream every single day and be perfectly healthy. Granted, you use quality ingredients. Indigenous diets, what our native ancestors ate, generally followed two principles, 60% of calories coming from animal foods and about 40% from plant foods, both of exceptional quality. This chocolate chip cookie recipe is reminiscent of those ratios to some degree, and it also contains a very high percentage of calories from animal foods and is therefore nutritious. What makes these cookies so healthy is the specific quality of ingredients, and with each of these ingredients, there are alternatives used in a bunch of different ways. The major ingredient in cookies is flour, and flour is a ground up seed. Uh, it's considered a grain, so you have wheat grass which grows, we harvest the seeds off the top of the wheat grass, we take those, we mill them up. There are a bunch of varieties of this wheat grass. Uh, modern hard red winter wheat is the most popular. This is what white flour is made from. It has 42 chromosomes. It is a pretty inflammatory food. It has been modified drastically over dozens of years uh, to have a higher yield, to have different properties. Einkorn wheat, which is what we have here, is the original form of wheat. It has 14 chromosomes. It's a more natural alternative to modern wheat flour. And this still might cause issues for some people. And this is arguably, you know, the worst and unhealthiest thing in this recipe, but many people can tolerate it. Uh, this is not going to be fermented or have any sort of sourdough element to it. Uh, if you did that, it could possibly reduce the anti-nutrient content further, but that would be a much more labor intensive recipe. So we have one and a half cups of the einkorn wheat flour that we will be using. In this bowl here, I have uh, some farm-raised pastured eggs. These are lower in omega-6 than conventional eggs, so they're less inflammatory, and they were grazing on pasture. So the nutrient content, the vitamin, the mineral, the element, and the fatty acid content of the eggs is substantially higher. Not only that, uh, most chocolate chip cookie recipes use a whole egg and some yolks. We're just using egg yolks in this recipe and yolk is where the nutrition is. So we're increasing the nutrient content by utilizing yolks and removing the egg white. Uh, the primary fat component is what makes a huge difference in the taste of the cookie. Here we have butter. Uh, I'm using a cup of salted raw butter uh, so we don't have to add any salt to the recipe. This stuff is so amazing. It's cultured raw butter is delicious. And when we make cookies with things like vegetable oils, uh, shortening, those things are literally what cause heart disease. Uh, so not only are we removing the inflammatory factor of those vegetable oils, we have butter, which can be a very high source of nutrients if it is from grass-fed animals, uh, raw, really high quality. So this is the main nutrient and energy component outside of the honey, at least. Uh, we move on to the chocolate. So this is cacao, and cacao means raw chocolate, raw cocoa. Uh, this is basically chocolate in its most natural raw state. In general, chocolate is pretty inflammatory because it's a high anti-nutrient food. It has a lot of phytates, a lot of oxalates. It's very high in histamines. It can be moldy. We're using a small amount. Is it the end of the world? No, it depends on your individual tolerance to the food. Just be mindful if you have any sort of histamine intolerance or at least start with a smaller amount of chocolate than I'm going to be using in this recipe. Uh, we're going to use about six ounces. Here I have half a cup of raw honey. Normally a chocolate chip cookie recipe uses well over a cup of sugar. Honey adds a complex flavor to it, and sugar is sugar, guys. And some of you guys might be wondering, Frank, why are you using raw ingredients if you're going to cook it? I know it kind of defeats the purpose, but you know the initial ingredient quality does determine the nutrient content. So 
it would be better to start with raw ingredients regardless. And one thing I'm really excited to talk about is some ground vanilla powder. Uh, this is pretty expensive. This was like $25 and oh, it's just pure vanilla essence. Uh, I think I'm going to put about half a teaspoon of this or about a whole teaspoon of this ground vanilla in the recipe. Uh, you could use vanilla extract, but vanilla extract is usually infused with alcohol, so this is more natural. And you kind of need vanilla flavor in a lot of baking recipes to make it authentic. Uh, some of you might have noticed that we omitted uh, baking soda or baking powder that is used in cookies. Uh, so the texture of our cookie is going to be pretty different, uh, especially considering the types of ingredients we're putting in here. I'm going to get all of these ingredients mixed up in the stand mixer. There's our cookie dough. I think we have to try the raw cookie dough before anything else. That's really good. Yeah, that's crazy. And we didn't even add that much honey to it. You really get the complexity of all the ingredients. You taste the butter, you taste the flour, you taste the egg, the chocolate. Frankie boy is going to get fat. All right, so it's very good. It's not too sweet, very balanced flavor. I'm going to actually add a little bit more salt because I don't think there was enough salt in the butter. I'm going to uh, grease up these baking trays. We're going to put the oven on 375 and cook these for about 15 minutes. Here are the cookies. I forgot to put salt in the batter, so I just sprinkled some on top. Should be fine. Not really sure how much of these are going to spread out, so I'm just erring on the side of caution. Cookies just got out of the oven. I think the dough was a little bit wet. That's why I had a hard time with this. Maybe it was also the lack of baking soda, but uh, they sure do smell good, so uh, we'll let these cool off for a few minutes and then we'll give one a try. So it's been about 10 minutes. I have a feeling the cookie dough might taste better than the cookies themselves, but we'll find out. So here we have really crispy brown on the bottom, nice and soft on top. These are really good. It's not that sweet. I would say you could even lean this towards more of a savory dessert. You can see the center is like really nice and chewy. If you want this to be crispy, maybe just lay them out thin, but I think chewy is the way to go here. I can really taste like the butter, the flour, the chocolate, not so much the honey, tiny hints of vanilla. So I actually have two things I wanted to try with the cookie. The first is a vanilla ice cream that's from a local farm. I used to make some myself, but I figured this would be uh, the ultimate combination of healthy dessert food. This would be like a $35 ice cream sandwich. And people would pay for it. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna try is just take some of the cookie and put some raw heavy cream on it. Cause I don't have any milk. I would have dipped it in milk, but I don't have any raw milk right now. The cookies are delicious on their own. 
Ice cream is a great addition as the cookies aren't that sweet. Cream is great as well. I would even try some raw milk if you had it. Uh, guys, I don't actually swallow this. I spit it out off camera because I have a lot of food allergies. In the future, I would love to eat this, you know, if I wasn't allergic to it, if I didn't have all the stomach problems after eating foods like this. And the only consequence of eating stuff like this every day is you might get a little chubby. So, I mean, you know, if you hit the gym, if you work out, uh, if you eat this food, it is hyper palatable. You will gain weight. Although if you stay active, it's not the end of the world to eat food like this. And this is certainly a great addition to, you know, your kid's diet, your family's diet as approachable food. Now, I do have some of these products on my Amazon shop. I will put the rest on my Amazon shop. In the future on Frankie's Free Range Meat, uh, we might branch off into something where we provide you guys with foods like this. You know, I'd love to even do like a raffle every month and send people some cookies and some sourdough bread. Thank you guys for watching. I will put the recipe I used down in the description below. I mean, I did kind of come up with this off the top of my head and it's not really refined, but it sure does taste good. If you guys could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon and share it if you can. If you guys would like to support me further, just check out some of the other videos on my channel. I will link that ice cream video at the end here. If you do want to check out Frankie's Free Range Meat, go to frankiesfreerangemeat.com. We are providing you guys with the highest quality, most nutrient-dense foods at an affordable price. Again, that's frankiesfreerangemeat.com. If you guys want to support uh, the future of us getting you stuff like this, especially the eggs, the dairy that's used in this product, definitely place an order. Uh, we're shipping stuff out now on a weekly basis. Outside of that, you guys enjoy the rest of the weekend.